ever wondered how you go from this to this, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how. So you guys have been sending in some photos for our top mod section on the tech show and they look so good. Some hand polished parts like stems, spacers, cranks, even the lower cage on a derailleur. And so it's inspired me to do it myself and I want to show you guys how to do it if you don't know already. Now, obviously you'll need a part that is anodized for this to work. So you'll know if the part is anodized because usually the color on your part will wear or it might chip, but it won't flake off. So if you've got a chip, then give it a little scratch and see if the top layer flakes off. If it does flake off, then that's pain and you need to look at a different method. Uh, we have done some videos on GMBN Tech and GCN on how to strip paint. So do check those out. However, if you've got an anodized part, then stick with me. I'll show you how to get that nice and shiny and silver. In order to remove the anodizing on your part, you're going to need either sodium hydroxide or sodium hypochlorite. Uh, so you'll need either a drain unblocker like this or a sink cleaner or an industrial degreaser to get rid of that. Um, now, even though this is for domestic use, it's pretty nasty stuff that you don't want to get on your skin, definitely not breathing it in or get it in your eyes. So you're going to need some gloves. Um, you're going to possibly need a mask or a really well vented room. You'll need a cloth or something to wipe the part when it's covered in the uh, drain cleaner and you might even want some scotch bright or some sponges that have a little scratchy pad to uh, rough it up and get that surface nice and clean of all of the color maybe even a cloth and then for the finished process you're going to need a perhaps a nylon brush or if you want to go for a brushed effect you can go for a metal brush um, if you want a smooth, shiny surface, then you're going to want some metal polish and either a lot of elbow grease with a cloth or perhaps a drill with a polisher on there. Um, now, in order to cover your part in the active ingredient, you're going to want to put it in a container. Uh, I would put it in a plastic container because it will corrode metal. So I'm not going to use this tray. But what I will do is use a bag because that way I can fit my part in there and just leave it to sit for a while. So you've got your gloves on, hopefully and you've got your plastic bag or your plastic container in order to put your part in. Um, I've gone for a bag because I just think it molds to the part easier and I'm also putting it over a tray just in case there's any spillages. So go ahead, put that part in there and then we're going to put the drain cleaner over the top. Okay, so you just need to leave that to sit for about 15 minutes. Now, if you find that you've run out of your drain unblocker and you need to add a bit more liquid, it's not quite covering the part, then use hot water, like boiling water, as that will agitate it a bit more, it will speed it up. If you use cold water, it doesn't work so well. So let's just leave that for 15 minutes and come back and see how it looks. So this looks really cool. We've got some black in the drain cleaner and we've got some silver peeking through on the cranks. Now it won't be completely silver, so don't be deterred if you still see some black on there. What you're gonna need to do is now take this over to a sink and start to rub it off and get it all off while there's still drain cleaner on it. So let's take it over to the sink and see what we've done. All right, so I've got my safety specs on just in case I splash this anywhere. But basically, you want to start rubbing it with your gloves and moving away some of that black. So you'll see that it kind of looks black, but once you start to rub it, it will go away. So this is where Scotch Bright or a good scratchy sponge will help you. And you want to do this while it's still in the drain cleaner, because otherwise, if you were to wash this now, it'll kind of reset and you won't get it off so easy and you'll have to scratch it off effectively. So as you can see, that's come off in, that's literally about 30 seconds, maybe a minute's worth of 
wiping and scrubbing. And uh, there, there's still some work to be done. Perhaps there was a bit of a pocket of air in the bag. Uh, if you want to do a little bit extra, you can put it back in, maybe add a little hot water to speed up the process or just go in with uh, the sponge a bit more aggressively or perhaps your nylon brush will help you a little bit here. So that's a bit of a stiffer bristle than the brush and as you can see, it kind of comes away. So at this point, it's probably good to be polished because the metal polish will help bring this up a bit better. But as you can see, some of the logos haven't come off. So some of the etchings and some of the paint may stay on there. And I guess it's up to you whether you like that. Maybe you want to keep it or maybe you want to scratch that off and remove the paint. So that's up to you. I'm going to leave a bit of it and see how it comes out. So I'm using the metal brush on the backside of the crank just so I can show you the difference between a polished surface and a brush surface because they are quite different. If you've ever seen uh, titanium frames polished or brushed, uh, they do give off quite a different effect. So uh, here the metal brush is actually taking off that anodizing quite well, but it is going to take a while. Okay, I think that's about ready to go back into the workshop and let's start polishing her and getting it nice and shiny. Yay. So here it is. I've just dried it off after washing it under some really hot water and the brush side looks so cool actually. I'm really pleased with that. Now obviously if you want a brush finished and you've used the wire brush, uh, then this is your finished product and you might just want to get into those little grooves and finish it off uh, as best you want it. But if you want a polished side, then stick with me because it looks all tarnished and a bit scratched. So we're going to need to use the metal polish and either a lot of elbow grease with the cloth or you can be a bit more me and go for a power tool. <laughs> I think it's important to note that anodizing is there to protect your cranks, but once it starts to wear away, perhaps your foot or your heel has been rubbing against it, then it won't protect your cranks anymore. So it is fine to strip it, but something like a metal polish does actually add a bit of protection to it afterwards as well. So it will protect it from the elements, but over time it might tarnish and you might have to do it again if that is a problem for you. Anyway, let's get going. So I'm going to put some of my polish on my cloth. So I've set my drill to clockwise so that it goes away from me and doesn't spray all up me. And I've also got my protective eyewear on there. So if you wipe away the polish, you will see it should have a really nice shine. Look at that. That's so good. So I've just done it on this section here for about a minute and you can already see that that is so much shinier than this side. So what I'm going to do is spend five minutes going over the whole of this crank so you can see what it looks like. So let's get going. So that's about all I'm going to do with the drill. Now, the more you work on this, the more polishing you do, the shinier it will get. So you just have to weigh up how long you want to be spending on this. But to finish it, you're going to have to do it by hand. So what I do is tend to get a little bit of the polish on a cloth. Like I've got a PT's microfiber cloth here, which is really good because it doesn't leave fluff on there. And just go over it by hand once with the polish and you'll see that black starts to come off. And the more you take that black off, the shinier it'll be. So just keep applying it and rubbing it back off until your cloth is clean or until you're happy with the shine level that you've got. But I actually think that looks really good as it is. Nice and shiny. So yeah, maybe I'll do my entire drivetrain like this and give myself a bit of a retro vintage look. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Would you have gone for the brushed look on the back here? Or do you like the shiny chrome effect on the front here? Uh, I think it looks really good. And I actually like the fact that the etching of the logo and the FSA logo is still there. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to putting that on a bike. 
Um, and let me know down in the comments below, guys, do you think you will do this with one of your cranks or maybe a stem or a frame, perhaps? We've definitely seen some people strip off paintwork on bikes and shine their bike up to an unbelievable finish. Um, otherwise, if you've done this already, don't forget to use our uploader link to send it in and we'll show it on top mods in the tech show. But for now, thanks for watching. Bye.